Hi there. This is Arlene Stredler Brown in Boulder, Colorado on a beautiful spring day. We finally caught up with Texas. It's beautiful out. Today in this module, we're going to talk in a little more detail about the routines and the materials that you can use in the home during your tele-intervention sessions. I'm going to refer to the uh, PowerPoint as I talk with you. So I'm going to share my screen here. There we are. But first, the tip for the day. And this one is from an early interventionist in Texas who was new to tele-intervention, who said, among other things, I saw a whole new side of the family. I was able to observe more details than when I have been present. So it's perhaps a silver lining to some of our work in tele-intervention. What I will be doing today is reviewing some materials that we uh, discussed uh, in a different module. When to conduct a session, where in the home, what to bring. But I'm going to do that today by using a case study but I want you to work with me. How about you identifying a family that you work with? And that can be your case study. So that as I talk about little Catherine, my case study, you can start to think about one of your families. So let me tell you a little bit about Catherine. Chronologically, she's 24 months of age. Developmentally, She's 16 months of age, which means she has a cognitive delay. Her language age is about 12 months. So her language age has not kept up quite with her developmental age, but she is at the single word level. And that's the focus for today's session. The communication approach she's using is a simultaneous communication approach. The parents are really hoping for Catherine to listen and talk. She has hearing aids. She has a bilateral, moderately severe uh, sensory neural hearing loss. But they want to use some signs, especially during this time when they're encouraging first words. So many first words are iconic. You, they look like what on your hands, the way they represent the actual word, uh, the concept of that word. They just thought they would be using some signs at this stage in her development. Not that they sign all the time, but they certainly will during these activities. So think about your family that you're going to choose for today. Which family did you choose? And feel free to pause the presentation here uh, each time I ask you to refer back to your family. So when will you conduct the session? By way of review, there are four different times when you might conduct a session, during parent routines, during child routines, during play routines. That play could be initiated by the parent choosing a toy or by the child choosing a toy. And my session with Catherine, I'm going to plan for three different uh, strategies that I'll be teaching. The first one will be a parent routine, getting a snack prepared. The second will be using a child routine, the child eating the snack. And if there's time, the third activity will be uh, the, another child routine, which will be changing Catherine's shirt because it got a little wet during her snack. So think about your family that you identified, which type of routine or what type of play will you choose to use? Now where in the home? will you be when you conduct your session? As we spoke in module two, you can be in different rooms of the house, you can be outside of the house, you could even be in a store or a library. 
in my example with Catherine. I want to refer back to this five part rubric of a home visit because we're going to be in three or four different rooms in the house during this session. During the reconnect and review at the beginning of a session, we'll likely be in the living room. And then as we discuss the priorities for the session, we'll likely still be in the living room. And then as we start to teach specific strategies during this part of our session, our first strategy will be in the kitchen because we're preparing a snack. Our second activity will be in the kitchen when Catherine's eating her snack. And the third activity will move to Catherine's bedroom because we're going to be changing her shirt. The value of being in different rooms of the house is so the parents can remember when they're in those rooms or doing those routines, just where they are during this session and generalize their interaction with Catherine to these familiar routines. So think about your family that you chose. Where in the house or another location do you think you'll be? And this gives you a chance to think outside the box about how to implement a strategy in so many different places. Now our third topic, you brought no props. Well, you're doing this through tele-intervention, so you're going to be relying on the family's props in their home, and there are so many possibilities. For Catherine, each of my strategies has different props. For strategy one, when I'm preparing the snack, I'll have the baby's chair, a bib, a pitcher with some water, a cup, water, of course, maybe toss in a cracker. And since that's a whole bunch of nouns, I'm thinking ahead to the vocabulary we're going to be using, I tossed in a verb, the <laughs> verb to drink. And during the second strategy, eating the snack, we have pretty much the same props and the same vocabulary. But we have different props when we go to change Catherine's shirt during the third activity, because we're going to be changing her shirt she might be on the floor, laying on a blanket, sitting on a blanket. She might be on a changing table or a bed. Um, we'll have her shirt, of course, and uh, some other vocabulary that you could design to go with that. But what I want to do is I'm going to outline a session plan, and I'm going to focus on just the first activity, just to break this down for you so it can get you thinking the way I'm thinking about our. Um, intervention and teaching strategies. Every strategy that's taught has a goal and an objective. And then of course the activities and materials. But here's the more challenging part. You have a goal and objective for the child. During the same activity, you can have a goal and objective for the parent. And again, during the same activity, a goal and objective that relates to the interaction between parent and child. This is why our work is so hard to do. So we're going to talk about our first activity, the first strategy, and that is um, focused on Catherine. And the goal of the activity, since she's at the 12-month level in terms of her language, is auditory comprehension or visual comprehension of single words. The goal is, is comprehension. The objective is single word level. I even broke that down a little bit and said, I want Catherine to be exposed to a whole lot of single words, mostly nouns, I'm going to toss in one verb. It's our parent routine preparing a snack activity and the materials, a cup, water, cracker, eat, drink, the bib, the chair, etc. But our work doesn't end there. If it did, it would be you working with the child and that would be child-centered intervention. So let's bring the parent into the mix. 
same activity, preparing the snack. But this time, I have goals for the parent. And that is to teach the parent to use more repetition as they're exposing Catherine to vocabulary. And the objective for this particular activity is to help the parents learn how to repeat the target vocabulary. For instance, chair, cup, water, cracker, and to repeat each word up to 10 times during this preparation of the snack. Now, of course, we're not just going to say chair 10 times. We would rather say, Catherine's chair, get in your chair. I'll pick you up to get in your chair. Catherine's chair, it's a little chair. My chair is big, your chair is little. This is the enriching vocabulary that can go with the parent repeating the word up to 10 times during the preparation of the snack. We're getting close to family-centered early intervention by having goals and objectives with our activities and materials for the child and parent. But there's a third piece, and that's something about the dynamics of the parent and child working together. Think about your family. Here's what I'm gonna do with Catherine. My goal for this parent-child interaction is to teach the parent to attend to Catherine's interests and to be cognizant of Catherine's participation in an activity. Well, let me focus on one little piece of that in this objective, and that's going to be for the parents to notice Catherine's mutual gaze and joint attention. Mutual gaze is parent and Catherine are looking at each other. Joint attention is Catherine and parent are jointly attending to the object that they're talking about, the water, the cup, the chair. The activity is the same, the materials are the same. We're still preparing a snack. Think about your family. Think about each family that you work with. Your goals will be different. Your objectives will be different. Your activities will be different. Your materials will be different. In my example, I would go on to have goals and objectives, activities and materials for Catherine's eating of the snack. And yet another outline for Catherine's uh, time in her bedroom when we're changing her shirt. How long does it take to prepare a snack? Well, if we didn't turn it into a tele-intervention activity or an in-home activity, it might take a parent about a minute and a half or two minutes. But I think we could turn this activity into 10 minutes or eight minutes in which the child is engaged so that uh, we have lots of opportunities to meet all three goals for child, parent, and parent-child together. So I wish you well as you think about your family and all your other families as you apply these principles to your tele-intervention. It takes a little bit of thought and it's a whole lot of fun. Till next time, bye-bye.